be in front of you today. Uh, my name is Anson Parker, and I am announcing my candidacy for the Office of City Council. I've lived in Charlottesville for the last 19 years, uh, and I hope to never leave. Uh, it's a wonderful town. I grew up in Lexington, Virginia, and first came to Charlottesville in 1996. Student biochemistry at the University of Virginia. I made it about uh, six months in DC and came right back. Uh, <clears throat> uh, for about five years, I worked in neuropharmacology uh, and then I went back to working as a web developer. Uh, I worked with the First Division and 26th Infantry Associations. I worked with Marshall Foundation. Uh, after about five years of that, I was young and feeling restless and I spent about seven years working in construction. I worked in, for Shelter uh, Associates, Falker Construction, and Gas and Y. Uh, these years taught me about underground utilities, local development, and the brass tacks behind urban construction, as well as a great appreciation for <coughs> local businesses and resources. I've been able to uh, buy one of the cheapest houses on the market also as a result of these uh, years, and uh, improving that house and improving my neighborhood has been one of my greatest joys. For the past five, four years, I've worked at UVA, building enterprise-level web-based tools. I've assisted and trained over 50 departments to save time and money with their workflows. This isn't glorious work. Uh, a lot of it is uh, really uh, kind of grunt work. We convert paper forms and turn them into web-based forms. We automate feedback loops. Uh, we try to improve communication between clients and workers. Uh, this is really low-hanging fruit, and it's something that I know will help serve this city. Uh, I've taught at PVCC, volunteered at Computers for Kids, Charlottesville LMR Robotics. Really, this is something I believe strongly in, and anything I can do to help the city with those uh, improve themselves in those ways is something I'm really excited about. Um, transparency is a tool, uh, especially if you like to work. Uh, for the majority of working people, trans transparency is a chance to be acknowledged for all the good work that you do. Uh, a lot of the people in City Hall are excited about transparency. They want to show the world what they do for a living. There is, you know, it is a minority. Uh, so, you know, and for most people who work honestly, they look forward to this. Um, transparency is expected. Uh, the next generation grew up with the internet. Uh, they are increasingly skeptical of pieces of the puzzle that aren't accessible to them through the internet. Uh, by taking a lead on this, the Republican Party May have and may help shape the conservative perspective. Uh, sorry, transparency is also a weapon. Uh, the other side of the coin is that there is a lot of waste in government. Uh, decisions are made by a handful of people, and m money is spent with minimal oversight. Uh, transparency cuts both ways. By creating tools that allow continuous oversight, we have a chance to keep in check the mismanagement of funds that takes place and make accountable those who wish to create slush funds or otherwise waste tax dollars. Uh, the next part of this, uh, I gotta say, came from speaking with Buddy Weber. Uh, many of you know Buddy, uh, he's a great person. And uh, the more he and I talked, uh, he brought me into some of the goals he had during his campaign. Uh, I've kind of rebranded it uh, Homestead 2.0, uh, H2O, I like that. Anyhow, uh, as this campaign unfolds, I, I really want to address public housing. Uh, 50 years after Vinegar Hill and the establishment of public housing in Charlottesville, the, uh, this continues to be a deep wound in the fabric of our, uh, uh, of our civic fabric. <clears throat> Many of my friends have <clears throat> grown up in public housing, and their cries for help reflect their experiences and basically being ignored. Uh, if anyone's ever been in one of those houses, they're atrocious. Uh, it's nowhere anyone would want to live. And it really disenfranchises a lot of people. Uh, working with, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the home, sorry, the Homestead Act of 1862 was one of the great achievements of our nation, an act that took power from the central government and gave it to the people, the people who were most in need. The people of Charlottesville are compassionate. Given a forward-looking solution with pra pragmatic management, we have an opportunity to work on Homestead 2.0. Uh, this is a local issue, but it's a national opportunity, and I feel that way about everything we're doing here. Uh, you know, building transparency locally, there are a lot of governments out there that need these tools. Uh, this is really an opportunity to think locally and act nationally. Um, something I've mentioned, uh, you know, and I don't want to drag in too much, but my sister is the deputy chief of uh, HUD, which is an opportunity. Uh, she has said also 
that a home setting acts that they've done in Baltimore were their most successful works to date. Uh, I really feel that if we crunch the numbers and work together to show how this can be done locally, it is an opportunity to scale nationally. Again, I, I really look forward to your support. I hope for your support. Uh, I hope to work for you. Uh, it's uh, a wonderful town, and I think we all know that. So, if there are any questions, I'd be pleased to answer them. So I'd just be curious if you could comment on your philosophy on competing, sometimes competing needs of fiscal responsibility with the need to improve our city with aggressive and uh, large scale programs, whether it be housing or anything else, and just sort of give us your two cents on the balance between those two. The first, uh, the first thing I'm looking at is uh, creating these, these workflows, the tra creating a transparency so that we can evaluate Right now, I think one of the concerns is we don't really know how the money is flowing out of the system. I mean, sometimes we're bleeding in the seams and we don't even know why. Um, fiscal conservancy, conservatism is best done, I believe, through transparency because it gives everyone a chance to look at where the money is being spent. Um, it's hard to make really bad decisions that are very expensive in public. Uh, somebody's going to come up to you and say, you know, that's a lot of money for a bad idea. Um, and, you know, that's, at least that's my perspective on it. Uh, does that answer your question? I mean, my philosophy is that, yes, by doing things, using the internet, having these feedback loops, you know, it's kind of like ordering a pizza, you know, where you go on to Domino's and you see, like, oh, Joe's putting it on the oven. Oh, so-and-so is doing quality control on it. Oh, so-and-so is delivering it to you. You're able to analyze those niche phases and understand where the time and money is being spent. So I believe in the long term, uh, it's a real opportunity. Any other questions? Yes. Um, let's suppose you were king of Charlottesville. <laughs> what would you accomplish? I would build a really good website and I would listen to other people. Uh, yeah, I think uh, <laughs> sense to not listen to me all the time. You know, I mean, I, uh, that would be the first thing I'd do is make sure that my feedback loops were clear so that I didn't uh, run too far astray. I have a question, Nancy. Please. If you were elected city councilor, would you move to put the city checkbook online? Absolutely. Absolutely. Actually, one of the first things I did with Leslie Beauregard back in 19, gosh, it was 2000, sorry, 2006, was I worked with Leslie Beauregard, who's the accountant uh, for City Hall, and we took all of their line item budgets and put them on the internet. Um, nobody was very excited about it back then. Uh, you know, I think a lot's changed in the last eight years. Uh, I hope a lot has changed in the last eight years. Um, no, I, I put a lot of time into those types of tools, and I think it's, the thing is, they were very open to this years ago. They were excited about it. Uh, you know, again, the majority of people are doing good work. Uh, and, and I think that's what should be exciting, is that we'll be able to see who's really doing great work in this town, um, which I think is the majority. I really do. Yeah. Mark? Okay, yeah, quick, quick question. Uh, a lot of times that when we're traveling around the city, we see a lot of people, we call them homeless. I, I don't know if they're homeless or not, but on the street corners and so on. Do you know how that would relate to public housing or how the city deals <coughs> with that issue. I'm going I'm to tell you a story. It isn't a story. It's a recent uh, study done in Utah, which is one of the most conservative states in the nation. I think everybody would give you that. But they recently tested taking the most indigent, the most undesirable people they could find, period. I mean, they found the most uh, recidivistic, just the worst people you find, and they put them in homes. Said, all right, you know, we're, we're still in the gym. And the remarkable thing they found, and this is fiscal conservancy, I mean, this is, was that it was much cheaper to put people in homes than to actually like incarcerate them, than to process them through the judicial system, and that recidivism dropped something like 80%. That a lot of these people were actually, I mean, they, a lot of the people are homeless, to be frank, they have. They have mental issues, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. right. Putting them in a home is actually an affordable concept. Um, it, you know, it's, it, I know this, I, but the, the, the math back
backs this up. This isn't, you know, this isn't my opinion. I, don't, I try not to have too strong an opinion. Um, this is really about where does the money go and how, you know, how is it best spent. Answer just one more than you. Sure. Yes. So obviously we're in a very progress, progressive, which is I think a it's a horrible buzzword, but it, but yeah, it's a it should buzzword be. city, which means that uh, people don't hold the same views. Most people don't hold the same views as us. How do you brand yourself? <coughs> How do you brand yourself so you can reach out to them? This is a two-part question because I want to get them both in. I think people need to hear this. So how do you brand yourself so that you can make your core ideas appealing? I, we are, I think we all find fiscal transparency, you know, appealing. So how, what, how do you do that? And then as a mirror, how do you build bridges? Where, where are the areas of commonality you think you immediately have with existing liberal you know, members of uh, city council right now? Uh, city council right now is a difficult question. Uh, but I will say that uh, the platform that we have here, uh, you know, and again, progressive is, is, a, is given a lot of bad words, but I think, I think that this platform that we're putting <coughs> on the table is incredibly forward thinking and that by taking the bull by the horns right now, we can lead in a, in a realm that, I mean, I build websites for a living. I build a lot of them. This is what I do. Um, I think we are competitive in a way, in a forward thinking way that we that I haven't seen before. Uh, I don't see anyone else on council that has any, quite frankly, any of the skills that I have, and I, not even close. And I think that's, uh, Again, I think it's a tool and I think it's a weapon. So um, then you're going to be using your idea of being pro uh, progressive, in yeah. a sense, yourself. Yes. And then saying, hey, we're going to be advertising on Facebook. That's, I mean, I'm not planning on doing a whole lot of, you know, TV type stuff. I'm, I'm going to be doing my marketing on Facebook on, you know, where I can pay 66 <coughs> cents for a thousand views. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there, this is, a, I've got a fairly aggressive uh, set of advertising goals, uh, if anybody wants to talk about it. Um, I think we can do targeted marketing and reach out to younger people. Uh, I'm building apps, you know. I never used an app before this campaign. Before I started working on this campaign six months ago, I thought smartphones were kind of silly. I didn't like them. Um, but I realized that the, I mean, again, that's just me. I don't like having another thing. Uh, but I, the, the next generation loves them. And so I think it's important to reach out and say, hey guys, this is an opportunity for you to participate. You may not be able to vote, but you can express your opinions on the issues that are going to city council. And so I think it's an opportunity for the Republican Party to get their message into younger minds. Uh, and I think that's something we should all be excited about. Thank you. Thank you, Hey, thank you. Enjoy.